you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Mothershed. Well, boys, look what the wind blew in. Drink Corcoran? Not now, I, I said it's time. Sykes? He's in the general store, but he's fixing to come out any minute. Tell your men to be ready. I already did. Now I'm telling you. Where are they? One on the roof, Mr. Mothershed, with a Winchester. One by the hotel, and one's over by the blacksmiths. Is that all you rounded up? And old Jason. Jason? He ain't worth a hoot. Oh, well, now, he's got eyes in the back of his head. Told him to keep watch across the street. Where's Johnny Rob? Johnny. He'll be ready. Don't you worry, none. I'll lay odds against that. You'd lay odds on any damn thing. Maybe. But I've got a $10 gold piece that says Johnny Rob won't show. Get on now. This ain't a proper gambling matter. I set it up real good, Mr. Mothershed. You'll see. All you have to do is sit tight. Any time now, I'll tell you. Hear that, boys? I hear it. It's going to be just like a turkey shoot. You don't want to go taking any chances now. Pino's fast. Fast on the draw. Sure he is. All right, wait till he walks out, then open fire. <laughs> Ain't even going to give the man a fighting chance, huh? That's not some cowpoke over there. That's Pino Sykes. Yeah, I heard about him. We all did. What kind of chance he ever give anybody? True enough. See y'all later, boys. Hey, don't you want that drink? I told you, Ara, I got business. There's gonna be a funeral. No funeral, just dig a hole and dump him in. But we gotta have one. His family keeps a plot up on Boot Hill. Plus, we already paid for the coffin. Where's he going? I'll tell you where. He's hiding down into his hideout till the killing's done. It's just as well. We don't need any more guns. If he's telling the truth. Especially about the Winchester. Pour me another whiskey, bartender. Yes, sir. Hear that? I heard something. There's old Jason's signal. Let's go, boys. It's as good as over. Normally, the man would be correct. This sounds like a moment very close to the end of the story. We're about to have a traditional shootout on the street, and barring a miracle, the bad man will soon be dead. But it's not always easy to tell the good guys from the bad. And there are some men of legend and folk tales who have been known to wreak their revenge even after death. The outlaw in question, Pinto Sykes, is one such person. And therein lies our tale. Because very shortly, we'll see how he introduces the town and a man named Connie Miller in particular to a long, dark night they didn't plan for in a place called the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, The Grave, starring Michael Rooker with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Put it on my bill. Yeah, yes, sir. I'll do that. Uh, thank you kindly. Y you want any help with those supplies? Nope. Well, then, uh, I'll be seeing you. Say. Y yes, sir? Where's everybody gone to? Well, I, I, I don't know what you mean, Mr. Sachs. I, I better be getting back inside now. What did you call me? Me? What? I, I didn't call you nothing. I say you did. Oh, I didn't mean no disrespect. You know my name. No, sir. I, I, mean, I mean, yes, sir. I mean, well, everybody does. What are you so nervous about? Me? Well, I, I'm not nervous. I just got business to do. What kind of business? Ain't no customers waiting. Well, I, I know, but I... I. Good day to you. Uh, come back real soon, you hear? Easy, Payne. Just tying this bag to the saddle, and we'll make tracks out of this jerkwater town. Freeze. Who's that? I got you covered, Pinto. Reach for the sky. 
Well, what do you know? Mothershed. You always was a low-down, egg-sucking dog. Still not man enough to draw on me. Keep your hand away from that gun. Hey, easy now. What are you doing in this territory? I bought me a big spread. This town's got no room for your kind anymore, Pinto. Still scared of me, ain't you, Mothershed? No need. I'm just passing through. Sure you are. Now, boys! Why, you... <laughs> He's still alive. He won't be for long. Go on. Get him to the old jail. What for? Town folks are watching. He's got people here. Lift his feet. Nah, just drag him. See that, Johnny Rob? <laughs> Never even got his gun out. No, sure didn't. That famous pearl-handled 45. Who gets to keep it now, you figure? Leave it, old man. Fetch a good price. Bury it with them. It's only right. They really did it. They? You was in on it too, Johnny Rob. Not me. I don't believe in taking a life. Even his. I would have bet on Pinto. The Guinness, you mean. Never thought they'd get him that easy. <laughs> eight shots. No man can stand up to eight shots. Not even Pinto Sykes. He ain't got more than a few minutes left to live, Johnny Rob. Reckon you'd better fetch his pa and sister. Ain't there nobody else can do it? Well, I sure can't. I have to see if the casket's ready, now don't I? All right, Mr. Corcoran. Yes, sure. <laughs> this here's the end of Pinto Sykes. Somebody there? <laughs> Only me, Connie. You shouldn't be standing in the shadows, Jason. I was waiting. Waiting for what? Had a feeling you might show up. Now that it's safe. Why? Pinto Sykes come through here yet? You didn't hear. Why don't you talk sense, old man? What's that picket fence doing out there in the street? His sister, I own, put it up day before yesterday to mark his blood. Closed it off so nobody would ride over it. Whose blood? Well, just who do you think? There's a southern wind. You know what that means, don't you? Not much dust in southern winds, blown down off the mountains. I bet if you look close, you can still see Pinto's blood shining in the moonlight. Who shot him? I asked you a question. Who, old man? Who? Where did you go? Who wants to open? I'll be. Is that... Well, well. Look at who's come back. Connie Miller? Gents. Take your coat off. I'll hang it up for you. Drink, Connie? Yeah, I could use one. Same as always? Leave the bottle. Oh, sure, sure. I said, who wants to open? That's all for me. Me too. I'm not much of a pot, but I'll take it. Did you notice, Connie? Notice what? Our little fence out in the street. That I did. I noticed it. And I know what's inside it, too. How'd you know that? Old Jason's out there walking around in the wind spouting off. And what'd he tell you? Ah, <sighs> the blood of Pinto Sykes. Well, for once, that old geezer told the truth. Who shot him? We did. Who's we? Us. The town. The whole town? Not me. I don't believe in gunfire myself. Only eight of us actually fired. But the whole town was behind it. Fact is, this town don't have much in the way of marksmen. That right. Out of eight that fired, we reckon only one bullet hit him. Which one? Don't even know for sure who fired it. Bullet passed clean through him and... No one is bragging that they're the one who did it. <laughs> no, sir. No one is claiming credit for that piece of gunplay. You know something, Mr. Corcoran? Maybe by now, wherever he is, Pinto knows who it was that killed him. What do you mean, wherever he is? Oh, he's up on Boot Hill, of course. Lying in the family plot. 
Reckon it must be some disappointment to you, Connie, being as how you spent so long trying to find him for yourself. That it is, Ira. Four months wasted out of the year chasing him. And I could have caught him right here. That's not the way Pinno told it. He claimed you wasn't even trying to catch up to him. Hello, Johnny Rob. Still running your mouth, same as always. You do spout off a lot, Johnny Rob. One last hand, double or nothing. Too rich for my blood. Mine too. Well, I'll deal some solitaire for now. Somebody worth playing against, huh? Instead of the likes of us. Do me a favor. Send that boy home. Of course, if Connie Miller was to sit in, this gambler meet his match. Nerves of steel. Isn't that right? It's past your bedtime, Johnny Rob. No need to get riled, Connie. Nobody here is saying you didn't actually try to catch Pino. Even if he claimed as much on his deathbed. He talked before he died? Mm-hmm. He lived a half hour after he was shot. Talked a blue streak right up to the end. What did he say about... About what, Connie? About me. Maybe you'd like to hear the story from the start. That I would. Go on, Corcoran. You tell it better than the rest of us. I'll do that for you, Ira. Reckon Connie deserves to hear it all. We got a new circuit judge now, Connie. Young feller named Ed Thackeray. He come through here last week, so we went to him with our complaints. Told him how one Pino Sykes is wanted by the law in three states. And how he treats this town like his personal property when he rides in. Just because he was born and raised here. Is that all you told him? We told him how we haven't had ourselves a sheriff in three years. And how Pino, well, he just rides in and helps himself to whatever he wants. With nobody to stand up and make him pay. We told him how we hired you, Connie Miller to track him down, but that we ain't had much results. Hey, hold up there. You know I've been on his trail. I know, I know. Well, sir, this Thackeray gets mad at us. Tells us to grow up and act like men, or else move on to where it's safe. He gets us kind of fired up. So we hold a meeting out at Mothershed's, and we all agree to work as one. The next time Pino shows up, we'd all join in and take him one way or the other. He rode in the day before yesterday. You want to tell the rest, Ira? Mm, not much left to tell. He rode in, and eight of the town gunned him down in the street. That's about all there is. No, that's not all there is. What about the curse? All right, you tell it. When did he do all this talking? After we carried him to the old jail. We sent for Pa Sykes and his sister I own. I know the names of his family. I was born here, too. Spent his last minutes talking to his people. Told his pa how sorry he was he hadn't turned out better. And his pa allowed that he turned out right well enough. He told Ion how he wished she'd marry a rich man, a rancher like Mr. Mothershed, and live on a proper spread. Then he asked to be buried near his ma, except not too near as she was too true a woman to have the likes of him close by. Said he wants his family to do the burying, as he don't want anyone else to come near where he's resting, even though I'm the one that ordered the coffin. Said if we did, he'd come calling on us. Yes, sir. He put a rock curse on the town. <laughs> That's what you call it. What did he say about me? Well, now, he got real riled when your name came up. Said the slower he rode, the slower you chased him. Said he waited in Albuquerque. Even sent word where he was. But you never showed up. Then he said you sure ought to be able to catch him now that he's dead and buried. But if you ever come any ways close to his grave, he'd reach up and grab you. Tell you one thing. Since the burial, there ain't been no one from this town hanging around that graveyard. I'll tell you one thing. He lied. Even on his deathbed, he lied. I searched Albuquerque. Every saloon, every hotel. He wasn't even there long enough to rent a room for the night. What's that? Take it easy, Connie. Just the wind. Put your gun away. Well, now, what do you know? Somebody's out there, all right. Pretty harsh night, too. So I reckon we better let him in.
I'll answer it. Oh, I'll do. Hello, Iron. Uh, nice to see you. Miss Sykes, what are you doing out so late? Gentlemen. Mr. Broadley, give me a bottle of rye whiskey, if you please. Surely. Uh, seems your paw is hitting the drink a mite heavy, though. You think so? None of my affair, but maybe you could try and get him to taper off. He's a fine man. He truly is. All I mean to say is, I swear I own, folks don't hold it against him that he was Pinto's paw. <laughs> oh, this isn't for my paw, Mr. Broadley. This is for me. Oh, I see. Uh, begging your pardon. Well, look what rode in on the wind. Hello there. My brother was just talking about you. Your brother? Most certainly. When was that? Day before yesterday. He's real sorry he missed you. We told him, I own. And did you tell him how Pinto's going to greet him if he does see him? We told him that, too. You've been chasing him for so long, Connie. You ought to feel real lucky tonight. You finally know right where he is. And all you have to do is walk out there. How nice for you. <laughs> That whole Sykes family was never real bright. Tell us, Connie. Tell you what? You afraid of Pinto's grave? What are you talking about? Because the rest of us are. How about you? I'll tell you something, Johnny Rob. I was never afraid of Pinto alive, and I sure as hell ain't afraid of him now that he's dead. Understand? Well, now, is that the truth? You know English, don't you? Because I don't exactly know as I believe you. Why, I'll bet. Hold it now, Connie. Simmer down. He deserved it. Maybe he did. But let's not have any bloodshed. Nobody calls me a coward. You didn't let me finish what I was saying, Connie. I don't think you're a coward. No, sir. Leastwise, I don't think you're afraid of anybody in this room. Especially not me. For sure not you. I'm just a poor boy that works hard for not much. I'm not real strong, but dogs and kids like me. Follow me around all the time. Go ahead. Why don't you speak your mind straight out? Have another drink, Connie. Come on. Sit down. Sure windy tonight, ain't it? <laughs> I remember the last time we had a wind like this. I'm waiting, Johnny Rob. Well, like I was saying, uh, no, sir. I don't believe you or anyone else is afraid of me. But whether or not you was ever scared of Pinto is something only you know. Johnny Rob. Well, I was about to say when you hit me and hurt me is... I'll bet, not that I'm accusing you, I'm just saying, I'll bet that you won't be calling on Pinto anytime soon. No. Anytime like tonight, for instance. Now why don't you shut up before you really get hurt? Now, Connie. Look at the time. By golly, it's almost 12 midnight. What about it? Drop it, Johnny. I'm betting you won't go out of here at midnight sharp and climb all the way up the boot hill and visit Pinto's grave. Now... I got a $20 gold piece somewhere. Yeah, it took me nearly 20 weeks of odd jobs to save it. Here, I'm betting it all that you won't do what I just said. That a real bet, Johnny Rob? Boy just can't help running his mouth, can he? Never could, as I recollect. Well, he does have a point, though. What about it, Connie? What about what? You calling him? Of course not. Why make him save for 20 more weeks? I don't need the money. Just the same. You did state that you ain't afraid of Pinto, dead or alive. If I heard you right. Look, I'm a grown-up man, and I don't do little boy things anymore. Like playing in graveyards at midnight. You know I'm not afraid, don't you, Ivor? Never take sides myself. Then you won't go. I don't like you, boy. I never have, and I reckon I never will. So, you've got a $20 gold piece. Hmm. Well, I've got a $20 gold piece myself. And it just covers yours. I'd say the bet's covered. Well, now, looks like in about 20 minutes, one of us is going to have $40 instead of 20 That's right. And afterwards, while I'm spending it, I don't want you hanging around where I have to look at you. Got it? Uh, don't you want to know where Pinno's buried, Connie? 
It's on the southeast corner of the graveyard, close to where Tom Santee's planted. Connie. Yeah? Haven't got another 20 you want to put up, do you? Are you saying you want to bet against me, Steinhardt? Betting's what I do, Connie. You know that. Oh, you're not looking so good tonight, Connie. When a gambler bets, he has to win, or else he go out of business. So, you don't think I got the nerve to go up either? I didn't say that. Then what did you say? I just said I'll bet $20 that you won't. You gotta bet. With my 20, your turn. What are you asking? To see my money? That's the idea. We've made bets before, Steinhardt. Yeah, but this time's different, Connie. Uh, if we were betting on a horse race or the turn of the next card, I'd trust you. But not this time. What's so different about this time? When you get out to Pinto's grave, how do I know he won't reach up and grab you? If you don't come back, how do I collect? There. That good enough for you? Gold certificates. <laughs> Legal tender in my book. Hold these for us, Ira. Sure, Connie. How about you? I've still got some more betting money left. Whose side are you on? Well, I'll never bet myself, nor take sides. How about you? Can't afford to bet tonight. Steinhardt here took all I got to lose. If you hadn't lost to him, how much? And which way would you have bet? <sighs> Reckon I'd bet against you. Nothing personal. I don't get it. You people know me. Why all at once you think I'm yellow? Because we'd be afraid. You can draw them guns of yours real fast, Connie. We've seen you. But out in that graveyard in the middle of the night, they ain't worth a copper cent. You'll have no more to fight with than a yearling on his first legs. I don't get my nerves from these guns. I had it way before I could pick them up. You'll find that out soon enough. Ira, get my coat. Right here. Uh, just one thing before you leave. Yeah? Well, we've got a detail to work out, Connie, since this is a job you have to do by yourself. How can we be sure you did it? My word's good. Well, maybe so. But look at it from where I sit. What's to keep you from going, let's say, as far as the edge of the graveyard, and then coming back and telling us you went all the way? You saying you don't trust me? Hey, business is business, Connie. This is my livelihood. Then it looks like you're going to have to go along with me to protect your interests. Don't it? Just to make sure I do what I say. He's got you there, Steinhardt. Yeah, that won't do. Even if I were inclined to go, which I'm not, it'd improve his chances. By the simple fact that uh, courage comes easier when a man's not alone. And how will we ever know? I have another way. Give me your buoy knife, Ira, from behind the bar. If you say so, but I don't see... Just bring it over and put it on the table. There. Now, Connie, when you arrive at your destination, stick the knife into the earth of the grave. And then at daylight tomorrow, we'll be able to see the proof. That's a real smart plan, don't you think so, Connie? I don't like to disturb a grave, not even Pinto's. You backing out? I said I'd go out there, but I won't treat no grave with disrespect. Then stick it near the grave. If we see it within five feet of fresh earth, we'll concede the wager. One thing's for sure, there ain't gonna be no one sneaking out there to steal the knife once you've planted it. <laughs> Keep the bottle on the bar, Ira. I won't be long. Who'd have thought? There he goes, all by his lonesome. And there ain't even a moon tonight. You know something? We might just lose this bet. You maybe, not me. I've already got my $20 worth, just seeing him squirm. Who's there? <laughs> just me. That Connie Miller again? Jason, I told you once, don't be lurking around in the dark. A man could get his head blowed off. Yeah, same as in daylight. <laughs> Gonna stay a while? What do you care? 
Well, that's your horse, ain't it? Tethered up by the saloon? A man shouldn't ought to leave his horse. Might catch a death all lathered up. I got one stop to make, then I'll be back. I could take care of her for you. Get her some feed and a blanket. No need. Can you spare me some change anyway, Connie? A ten-cent piece will do, so I can get me some grub in the morning. I'll take care of you later. If it's all the same to you, uh, I'll have it now. You don't trust me? Sure, I trust you. But uh, a lot can happen twixt sundown and sun up. East side. Right about there. Now all I have to do is... Evening, Connie. Come to see Pinto? Maybe. <laughs> You're braver than I thought. What's that under your cape? You want some? A good belt of red rye might make it easier. There's still half a bottle left. I don't get my nerve out of a bottle. Oh, no? <laughs> Where do you get it? I ain't afraid of no man. Then you go on up there and see him, why don't you? I'll do that. I was just there. <laughs> He's waiting for you, you know. I'm coming, Pinto. You can count on that. Pickett, Winslow, Appleton, the Nottinghams. Where? What? Old caretaker shed, that's all. Door blowing off the hinges. Caretaker shed. That's all. Look at all this junk. Picks, shovels, markers. Ah, and a little old window. Good. That's good. Sure it is. I can spot you from here, Pinto. <laughs> right there. By the Santi plot. Fresh dirt. And a wreath. Well, Pinto. All those pretty flowers... They're going to blow away by morning, and then what will you have? Nothing. That's what. You can't hurt me now, Pinto. Not now. You'll never hurt anybody again. Your day has passed. But I remember you. The way you used to be kids up in school. The way you lied so your ma wouldn't know. The way you cheated me on my first horse. And me always looking over my shoulder to see if you're following me. Why'd you do that, Pinto? Hmm? Why'd you lie and cheat and steal? When you robbed your first bank, you thought you were a real man. And the first time you killed, you were so drunk you couldn't see straight. But you didn't care. Yeah, after that, the rest was easy, as long as you snuck up behind them. You were fast, all right. Fast on the draw, but your last was weak. That's your blood and the dirt out there, not mine. Here, Pinto, I brought you a present, something to remember me by. I'm leaving it on your grave, stuck right through your black heart. Rest in peace! There. <laughs> it's done. Uh -huh. Now I hope you burn in hell. Yeah. Huh? What? No! Let go! Let go! Let go! Let go! Oh! 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 Seen him, Johnny Rob? I don't understand it. It's full daylight. And he ain't back yet. Well, maybe he didn't have the nerve to come back and face us. After he turned tail and run. That's not likely. His horse and gear are still here. So he didn't just ride out of town. But he didn't come back to collect his bet, neither. I'm wondering if... If somehow I ain't got a man killed. Nah, that's no way to talk. I didn't mean to. I didn't ever mean to do that. It's daylight now, Johnny Rob, and we can think with clear heads. 
deep down, we all know the dead can't really hurt nobody. You know that. I don't. Morning. Morning, I own. And what brings you out so early, Miss Sykes? I'm on my way to the graveyard. Why are you carrying a, a, a dinner plate? This was his. He used to eat out of it when he was a boy. I thought I'd put it on the grave. Oh, uh, well, that's very nice and all, but you know, I don't, I don't think the dead are hungry anymore. They finally got their piece. You might say their cup runneth over. Thank you for saying that, but I still want him to have it. Mm-hmm. I'm going with you. Uh, do you mind? You may, Johnny. If you like. Gotta see what happened. Well, reckon we can't spend the rest of our days being afraid of a dead man. Um, I'll come too. I guess this is one hand I just have to play out. Now then, I own. We sort of got turned around. Whereabouts is the southeast corner? There. I can see it from here. And I can see him in his long coat. Oh, Lord, I knew it. I knew it. I've gone and got a man killed. See? See? Connie Miller lying here by the grave, dead. Put it out, Johnny Rob. You're acting like a baby. It isn't your fault, boy. No? What happened? What really happened? The whole story's right in front of you. Look at it. I'm looking. And all I see is Connie with a knife through his coattail so he couldn't run. Oh, he must have been powerful scared. Well, he was more courageous than I thought. He came. He knelt by the grave, see? Right there's his knee prints. What are you getting at, Steinhardt? Somebody caught him here and pinned him to the ground. You don't think he did that to himself, do you? He pulled a knife from his belt and thrust it into the grave like this. But the wind was strong, as it is now, and it blew his coattail over the grave. And being so dark, he, he didn't notice that he'd put the knife blade through his own coattail, pinning it down. You mean... Then he started to rise. As he did so, when he was perhaps halfway up, he felt a sudden tug, the knife holding his coattail. But in his mind, Pinto had reached out and grabbed him. I'll be. He was already scared half to death. <laughs> this finished him. His heart gave out. That's all. That's what happened? It is, isn't it, Corcoran? Tell me, we ain't to blame, are we? What he says makes sense. The fact is, uh, proof is all there. Kind of killed himself in a manner of speaking. <laughs> is that what you think? What's she saying? Now, now, there you are, bud. Your plate, remember? So, you think Connie's death was an accident? That he stuck the knife in the hem of his own coat? Yes, ma'am. Tell me this. How did his coattail get over the grave like that? Well, for some reason or another, because yeah, he was in such a hurry, he left it unbuttoned. Yeah, and the wind must have done the rest. What direction was the wind from last night? South, why? The south, same as now. And I'm standing in exactly the same spot Connie was. You are right enough. Look at my cloak. Look at it. Is the wind blowing it across the grave now? No. It's blowing out behind you. So it couldn't blow the opposite way, could it? Not today, and not last night. Then how? Something would have had to reach out and pull it in the other direction, so it spread over the grave in front of him. That's only logical. Don't you agree? Well, I, I, I'm afraid the lady's right. Morning to you, gentlemen. I'll be getting home now. Don't worry. 
I can find my way. Final comment. You can take this with a grain of salt or a shovel full of earth, according to your preference, as either shadow or substance. We leave it up to you. And for those who are interested in a further search for truth, one suggestion. You might begin by checking under G for ghosts in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The Grave, starring Michael Rooker with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Montgomery Pittman. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Doug James, Jeff Lupiton, Linda Ryder, David Darlow, Christian Stolte, Bob Dunsworth, Carl Amari, Vince Amari, and Roger Wolski. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, Exim Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. Mm-hmm.